This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with non-binary people to learn the truth about this misunderstood gender identity that falls outside the traditional male-female binary. If they're offended when people use an incorrect pronoun, and if they feel society would be a better place without genders altogether. By the end of this video, we'll find out if identifying as not entirely man nor woman has been blissful as they live their most authentic lives, or if this label has elicited constant shaming and pressure from the outside world to conform within society's definition of normal. Hello, Angel. Hello. Jacob. Hello, hello. Jeffrey. Hi there. I'd love to hear yeah. you define what non-binary means in terms of gender. The gender binary says you gotta be in one of two boxes in order to be understood as a person. With the non-binary community, we say no. I don't have to be in either box. What questions surrounding the idea of being non-binary do you feel like a broken record answering? Do I have to be androgynous to be non-binary? Do I have to use they, them pronouns in order mm. to identify as non-binary? No, you don't. Isn't they plural? And the response is, what do you say when someone leaves an umbrella somewhere? Oh, that, they left that over there. Exactly, and you're talking about one person. No, I was talking about the 500 people that probably Under have an some umbrella <laughs> together. The least interesting part of it is the pronouns. Yes. Like, that is such a, like, <laughs> dumb technical classification. It's about giving yourself this, like, profound freedom and joy and bliss in your body. And people are just like, but how do I use the pronouns? And I'm like, shut up about the pronouns. Do you get offended when people misgender you? I'm personally a little bit more chill about it, but I do know that there are other people who are non-binary out there who it is really, really painful for them to get mm. misgendered. It just depends on who it is. For you, you feel like it's more about the intention behind it? Yeah, especially the aftermath. Like if somebody misgenders me and then I correct them, how they react afterwards is really more of what I look for. Someone can use the wrong pronoun and mean it with a lot of love and, and just not know better. Yeah. You know? And I think that it's important for us to hear people's intention and then meet them where they're at and then be like, oh, actually, I do use they, them. Right, because it really comes from a matter of do they respect me or right. not? I think most people are well-intentioned and most people are trying to be kind and respectful. Do you welcome people asking you questions? Always. I have the right to sort of be like, I don't feel like talking about my gender right now, yeah. but I'm down for questions and I'm down yeah. for like a, a just, you know, a very easy curiosity and a kind sort of wonder, wondering because most people don't, we don't have good language for all this stuff yet. Most people are still pretty early in figuring a lot of this out. When did you first realize that you did not identify with the gender that was given to you? As I like grew up, I kind of like was comparing my experiences with other kids and, and seeing how they would react to certain things. And everyone was just super like obsessed with certain girl things and girl clothes. And, and it's not that I was obsessed with only boy things, but mm. it's just, I didn't see that binary. Anything that you were interested in was fair game. Right. While, while many other kids would say, oh, that's a boy thing to do. Oh, that's a girl thing to exactly. do. Exactly, yeah. Like I just played whatever was fun. I knew I was this way in kindergarten. I would get in trouble for taking all the dresses and not letting anyone else wear them. Were you in trouble because you were hogging it or because it was a, not a boy thing? Both. <laughs> I never had a moment where I didn't realize it. As long as you can remember it. The moment that people introduced conceptually the idea of boys and girls, I was just like, well, that's dumb. You're like, no. that is a societal construct. Right, like, that's stupid. I was like three <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know about that one. <laughs> because all that gender was for me as a child was just things that were forbidden. I remember a group of kids making fun of me because I had a purple lunchbox and they were like, that's gay. And I was like, I didn't know what that word meant. But I was like, you said it in a way that I How feel many... like it's not a good thing. So therefore I should not want to be this. How many Y's in the word gay? How did they say it? It was like somewhere between three to 16 Y's. It was like, that's gay! <laughs> I mean, that is the appropriate amount for a purple lunchbox. I hope you eventually came to the realization that you were gonna keep your lunchbox. And I wish I could say that was the case. Yeah, not but a lot of us do. I remember going home and being like, mom, can I get a new lunchbox? She was like, why? I was like, uh, I just don't like that one anymore. And that's where the communication ended. It's like you don't go home and say that to your parents. And you somehow learned that that's how 
those people are, and you don't want to be it. Mm -hmm. And All it's I knew was so taboo, bad. you shouldn't even talk about it. Do you feel like you were misgendered at birth? Oh, definitely. I believe that most people are actually misgendered in so much as the moment we have a gender assigned to us, anyone, even if you identify as cis, even if you feel yourself to be a man, the moment the label man was placed on you, there was a, there was, there was at least one expectation of Absolutely. manhood, the minimum one, likely more like thousands, yeah. that did not work for you. If people were just like, hi, this is Jacob, um, they're a person. <laughs> And, That's a wild concept. Right. Then I'd be like, oh, I'm just uh, cool. Like, so can I go play with dolls? And they'd be like, yeah, some people like, that, play with dolls. That's a person thing to do. Yeah, that's a person thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, can I like glitter? Yeah, that's a person thing. Cool, cool, cool. Can I kick a soccer ball sometimes but not love it that much? Yeah, that's a person thing. People cool. do that. People do it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, like, it would be so much easier. and would have saved everyone a lot of grief and confusion. What do you wish that you would have been gendered as? Probably non-binary, honestly. Non -binary. I would have loved a blank slate. Right, like if right. my parents would have just been like, hey, this We're is like, Angel. Don't circle M or F, just kind of leave a blank. <laughs> we'll figure it out later. <laughs> we have yeah. the time for this. <laughs> How did your parents play a part in this whole journey? My parents thought it was their job to make me not like this. Because my parents used everything they could think of, withholding affection, telling me God doesn't love me, hitting me, beating me up. Everything that they could think of to get me, to get the queer to leave my body. It, the bittersweet thing about my dad is he apologized to me when I was like 33. How was that to hear? It was good to hear at the time. And I started immediately to grieve the six-year-old who needed to hear it then. How did your life change after hearing that from your parent, knowing that they came to the realization that they didn't? do what was best for you. I certainly understand that both of my parents were acting out of their own programming. And their own fear of what might happen to you if you weren't the way that they envisioned exactly. your perfect life. My dad literally said I was afraid of what other parents would think of me oh. because of who you are. And that was so that was personal for him. Many of our parents are programmed to think that they are failures mm. just because of naturally who we are. And of course, that's going to rub off on us. I was taught so thoroughly to hate myself. You know, if my parents are going to treat me this way, I'm going to treat myself this way before they can even get there, right? I'm definitely going to be teacher's pet of self-hate. And I just went so thoroughly there that eventually the pressure just built and built and built and built. And I needed to do something very drastic. And I moved away to a Buddhist monastery to be able to look at all of these patterns and to just have space to learn to be quiet with myself. Quieting that internal monologue that was berating yourself constantly. Or even taking a look at it or ignoring the internal monologue or learning to live a life that doesn't depend on it so much, right? I don't think I'll ever be able to get rid of the programming, mm -hmm. but I certainly can get rid of the self-hate and I certainly can treat myself well. Yeah. And I do. <laughs> uh, Damn right. Do you feel like they kind of came from a place of fear, of fearing that if you didn't fall within these confines that you might be hurt, you might grow up to not enjoy life or be bullied or whatever? I think I was in my mid-20s when I first heard, like, my dad and my mom admit to me that they were scared for me. A lot of where it was really coming from was a fear that the world was gonna hurt me because I was, who, because I am who I am. And the really f***ed up part is that they're not wrong. The thing I had to explain to them is that we will never live in a world that doesn't try to hurt people like me unless I live this way. There are risks that I have to take in order to create a world where I am safe. What do you think has been the most difficult moment in your life surrounding being non-binary? Eventually becoming estranged from my parents. We're not in contact. You know, it has to do with a whole lot of things, obviously, but it has to do with the respect I've given myself. You told yourself that you, you didn't have to experience. Yeah, I mean, experience. it is a very bittersweet thing because it's a big change. And that's the bitter part, but it's also a sweetness because it is something, it is a symbol of respect for myself. I'm like trying to hit on people or trying to like meet people or trying to like go on apps. And then I'm like, but why am I not being treated as if I'm hot? Because I am. Because you're different? And yeah, it's because we don't know how to treat gender different people 
as just attractive and cute there's in the way that we are. There's, there's a, a stigma, stigma, right? There's In the comments okay. right now, there are dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of people saying, I would date him. I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, Jacob, single. Hello. Ready to mingle? Yeah, oh, fully prepared. Single, ready to mingle. Yeah. You know where to find him. And if anyone who watched was watching, that was an um, like, <laughs> I, like apostrophe E-M. Find him. You knew what I knew what it was meant. A, apostrophe E-M. I'm like, you'll find him. Right, no, there was no aspirated H. <laughs> I heard no aspirated <laughs> H. What is the most difficult part about explaining what the term non-binary means to people who are just completely unfamiliar? People who were not in on the creation of a language mm. find it very hard to explain who they are mm. within that language. So for us to explain deeply who we are using a language that is so weighed down mm. with its very binary past is really difficult. And most people snap to an assumption that we're just so weird. But it really is just that English is so weird mm. and doesn't have the pronouns, the, the capacity, the language, the words. How do you feel about gendered languages? Oh, I hate them. <laughs> Out of here. I was on a panel in Florence with non-binary activists who had to talk about how everything has a gender. So pencil, plant, that it is so etched on who they are that there's a binary mm -hmm. because of the, the way they speak yeah, and how yeah. that affects you. And you're constantly reminded through the language that was spoken by your ancestors, 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 that this has been something so deeply ingrained into the culture that it's not going anywhere and that you're wrong if you don't fit within that, because even the language is built upon that. Exactly. How do you feel about people who, you know, even if they're well-intentioned, say all non-binary people want to be referred to in this way? It drives me crazy because it completely, like, shatters the entire concept of being non-binary. Yeah. Now that people who are non-binary are starting to get a little bit of push in media and in shows yeah. and things like that, they all look like me. They're super skinny, they're white, they're assigned female at birth, mm. and that is not where it ends. Like, people who are non-binary are so diverse in how they look and how they act and how they present because it is such a broad term. You can look fairly conventional and still be like, yeah, but I don't think of myself in those terms and not feel like they have to look like me in order to call themselves non-binary. Right. You don't have to look a certain way in order to identify as non-binary. You can just say, you know what? This gender shit's kind of stupid. Right. I'm a little fed up with it. <laughs> I would like to feel a little more free in my life. Do you think society as a whole would function differently if no one was assigned a gender at birth? Uh, yeah, I think it would be different. I don't think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. What I really would love is just for people like me to be more accepted. Mm. You want to be more inclusive rather than saying, let's get rid of all of it. Indeed, it it's, it's an addition and not a subtraction. Mm -hmm. How does all of this affect legal documents like your ID and whatnot? It's definitely a shit show. I'm out, I'm living my non-binary identity. I want to be perceived as, you know, gender neutral. Part of that for me is having documents that reflect that, especially when I go to the bar and I hand them my ID, which currently now shows me looking like a cis woman. Mm. I get so many like... Mm. And like the like quadruple takes, and mm. and, so, and that just creates a space that I just like doesn't need to be there. If they could just look at the ID, see the X, they they would know. You yeah. know, it would it would eliminate a lot of really uncomfortable situations. If there's anyone watching who is currently angrily commenting down below that the, the concept of non-binary is all in your head and that there are only scientifically, biologically two genders, what would you say to them? Oh, what I say to everybody is I'm like, if you Google the definition of gender and you read like one of the first results, which is from the World Health Organization, yeah. they say that gender is a social construct. Oh, so yeah. I don't really know how, uh, how else further to explain to you that you're trying to use science, but science says that gender is a social construct. Yeah, yeah. You hear that? Science said it. Can't argue with science. It's actually, actually. That's a whole other conversation. That's a different video. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like this misconception comes from the idea that gender and sex is the exact same thing? It comes from the idea that gender and sex are the same thing, right? That like having a penis means you're a man. But it also comes from this idea that sex is easily sortable into two, two categories. Mm -hmm. There is so much diversity among even human sex. What it shows us is how this toxic gender bullshit gets into scientifically how we think about bodies. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do to unlearn um, the really shoddy science around sex difference. How do you feel when people tell you that 
non-binary is just a new trend. The way that I felt, I have felt my whole life. It's really invalidating, you know, because I think a lot of people are so quick to say that because I haven't had that experience, it's not real. And I wish people would maybe take a step back and say, you know what, I, my experience and my perception of the world is just that, it is my perception. And there's a whole however billion people out there who see the world differently than me. Before we continue learning about the world of non-binary, if you were to have kids someday, what would you want them to refer to as? I wanted to let you know that pre-orders for Made Padildo Chan are available now. And for those of you who have no idea what the f I am talking about, I do not blame you. This clip should explain all you need to know. Made Padildo Chan comes adorned with a stage to keep those thunder thighs tamed like the foul beasts they are. And when you're done bleeding your soul on the stage, rip that stage out from beneath those kitten heels and prepare for state-of-the-art stomping action! And I'd also like to thank HBO Max for sponsoring this episode. Many of us are exhausted from scouring the deep, dark, dilapidated depths of streaming platforms, desperately digging for something new to fill that void of entertainment in our hearts. But thankfully, HBO Max exists with same-day movie premieres of the biggest movies of 2021 every single month. And yes, for those of you who didn't ask, that does include the biggest blockbuster Warner Brothers Pictures releases that'll be available in theaters theaters and your living room the same exact day. Personally, I'm looking forward to Malignant, even though there's technically no full-length trailer out for it yet, because I just got a good feeling inside my body and I trust my body. And also, I'm excited for Dune, because Timothée Chalamet, these movies, along with so many others, will be available in theaters and on HBO Max the same day for a limited time and at no extra charge to subscribers. Release dates are, of course, subject to change, so get on it before it's too late and sign up for HBO Max at hbom.ax slash Padilla. Now, back to the world of non-binary. How do you think your life has changed most since identifying as non-binary? I was finally able to sit quietly with myself without eating myself alive from the inside out. And not everybody needs to come out. Not everybody can. It's not always safe for everyone. But to me, that's the gift that it gave me to be truly, truly myself. I think I've definitely developed so much more confidence and I just feel more me. And mm -hmm. it's it's kind of funny that when you start to feel more you, things start to happen that you would think aren't necessarily tied to your gender. I started surfing, which I've never done sports in my life. I'm willing to take risks and just like step outside of your comfort zone because there wasn't this weight of this other thing on you. Like there was space that freed up in my brain where I was mm. like constantly beforehand sitting there thinking like, why am I different? Why am I so different? Why, you know, why am I going through this? Why am I like this? And that was just a constant hum in, in the back of my head. Mm. Now that's gone. And so now I'm, and, and I'm just feeling more comfortable in my own skin and I'm, I'm confident in who I am. Jade wants to know what your experience with dysphoria has been. Dysphoria is, is a disconnect between how you feel on the inside with how you maybe look on the outside. Um, so it's like a body part or something like that. Mm. For me, it's mostly been, you know, with my body. Um, I tend to have a lot of dysphoria on my chest um, and just like my shoulders and things like that. I And I really just want an androgynous looking body. Like I don't want anybody to like look at me and go, that's a woman based on mm. this or that's a man based on this. Heather wants to know if you were to have kids someday, what would they, what would you want them to refer to you as? I think I'd want to get away from mom and dad entirely, and I want them to call me Pop, because that's I love cute pop. as hell. That's cute. And also, like, I'm Pop. You know what I, I mean? Pop. Like, I am Pop. I feel like a lot of people imagine that if there is a non-binary identifying parent, that they expect their child to be like, Parent! I bet my kids would be like, would, would like when they wanted to really get under my skin, would yeah. be like, gender neutral parental unit number one, <laughs> I'm <laughs> hungry when it's dinner. That's and a three year old. Like, Shut up, Cassandra! <laughs> if there's anyone watching who feels that they might identify as non binary, but are nervous about coming to terms with that because of what that might mean in their family or societally or even within themselves. Is there anything that you want to say to them? Make sure you're in a safe place. Make sure you have a good um, friend group that you can toss these thoughts back and forth with and experiment within that friend group. You know, try going by they, them pronouns for a week or try a different name for a week or, you know, even just say, like, I'm non binary for a week and, and, and within that safe space, see how that feels. And if it feels right, then maybe do some soul searching a little bit and maybe you are. Always remember that you deserve to feel good. Taking it slow and really being kind to yourself and giving yourself the gift of patience um, will 
make this feel a little bit more doable because it's a journey and it's going to take a lot longer than you think but I mean that in the most beautiful way. Like I am 29, I am almost 30, and I am still discovering new things about my gender every single day. And it's fabulous. Damn, damn. I'm a wise old grandma, damn. okay? I gotta have some sage wisdom for the babies. I would expect you to have so much gray hair with that kind of statement. I have quite a bit though, look. You see it? Damn, damn that's how you know you're wise. What do you think the biggest misconception is about non-binary people? Non-binary people are curvy. Non-binary people are fat. Non-binary people are every skin tone, every ethnicity, every race under the sun. We are everywhere, and there is no such thing as what a prototypical or archetypal non-binary person looks like. Mm -hmm. And I wish that people understood that better. All right, you got five seconds of shout out to promote anything you want directly into camera. Go. If you want to watch queer content, subscribe to Angel and Nicole on YouTube, and you can follow me at Kinkle Morris on TikTok and Instagram. It's called Sissy, a coming of gender story. Buy it from your local bookstore if you can, but if you can't, you can buy it online. Bye. By my audiobook, my voice will tell you there is nothing wrong with you. Y'all should subscribe to this cutie over here because we had a great conversation. And also, then you get to see more of Slade. True, because Slade has uh, some rage issues. So if you don't click that subscribe button, you don't want to know. After spending a day with these individuals who identify as non-binary, I've come to understand just how nuanced and complex gender identity really is. Everyone's experience with what feels most authentic to them is wholly unique and deserves to be met with respect at the very least. Yeah, they're fuzzy, fuzzy little edges. <laughs> We are all just slobs, okay? Can I hold Slade? Go ahead. Is that acceptable? Go ahead. Does Slade, do you consent? Slade consents. Okay, cool, yeah, cool, he cool, likes cool, getting cool. touched. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> anyway, what are we talking about? They move very slow. They're very deliberate and intentional. Deliberate, yeah. They're super cute, very fuzzy, and kind of act like they're stoned all the time, which I feel resonates with who I am in this world. I can relate.